Hi, my name is Roman Khan. I'm going to teach you how to use Minitab by taking you through a worked example from my book, Minitab Exercises for Green Belts. By the way, that's available on Amazon. I recommend you work along with the example by downloading the data set from my website, RMK6 Sigma. And by the way, that's free. All the details are given below. Let's go when you're ready. This is the first video of a series of three videos showing you different facets of gauge R and R. Also, because it's the first video, I'll show you how to get the data from my website rmk6sigma.com so you can work along as well. As it says on the board, this is exercise 8.01. So the exercise scenario is as follows. Stratonics Limited produces non-stick linings from extruders, as you saw in the ANOVA chapter. They measure the stickiness of the linings using a friction meter. An improvement project has just been started. It focuses on improving the linings and the data has been collected for a gauge R&R study for the measure phase of the project. The study data is in worksheet, sticky linings. This gauge R&R study uses 14 parts randomly taken from the line, which are designated A to N. There's three operators, Ikra, Hamza and Raisa, and there are three repeats and we can use a historical standard deviation for this study of 0.43. So it's your job to analyse the study and report the results. Your boss wants the following tasks done in the order shown below. Number one, produce a gauge run chart. Number two, from the gauge run chart, estimate which is the stickiest part and the least sticky part. Number three, estimate from the gauge run chart which is greater, reproducibility or repeatability. Number four, run the gauge R and R routine using the assistant. What is the breakdown of the gauge variation? Number six, do any of the operators need more training? And number seven, are any of the operators having trouble with any particular part? And number eight, is the measurement system acceptable? If not, what are your insights to improve it? So as you can see, the question scenario has two parts. 1 to 3 relate to the gauge run chart, 4 to 8 relate to the gauge r and routine in the assistant. Right, let's see how to download the data now. So this is my Google Chrome home screen. I'm just going to go and search for RMK6 Sigma. As you can see, it's already there for me because it's my website and I go there a lot. So in my Google search, rmk6sigma.com is the first one that's listed, probably because I've been there quite often. And I just want to go to Downloads, so I click on that. Okay, and there you can see advertising for my new course. But if you go down, you'll go through the books that I have. And because we're going to be doing examples from the mini tab exercises for Green Belts book, which you need to click on that. And these particular examples relate to chapter eight, which is measurement system analysis. So just click on that and that should download the data sets. Okay, let's open that now. So here I've got Excel open and these are all the data sets for the different examples, which are named along the bottom in different worksheets. As said in the example scenario, this one is for sticky linings. So let's click on that. And there's the data for the example. I usually click and sell A1, then press Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, and then transfer that into Minitab. Okay, with the new worksheet open in Minitab, I just press Control V to paste the information in there. So here's the data loaded into Minitab. And as you can see, there are three columns of data and I've given each column a title that's designated to its function. So we have the parts, the operator and the measurement. I find if you do that, it just makes it quicker to move through the menus. As we know, the first part of the question was to form the gauge run chart. So let's do that now. Click on Stat, Quality Tools, go down to Gauge Study, and there you'll find Gauge Run Chart. Click on that. So as I've said before, it's going to be easier for you if you give your columns the names of their designations in terms of what of the data that they contain and what's listed in the menus for Minitab. So we have Part, goes into the Part, Operator goes into Operators, and Measurement for me goes into Measurement Data. I don't have to do anything else, just need to click OK to form the Gauge Run Chart. 
So here's an enlarged view of our gauge run chart. And just to summarize what the gauge run chart is showing us, uh, let's quickly go through that now. So the parts are given across the X axis. So here's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we've got two rows just because there's so many parts. Then we've got H to N on the bottom. And the Y axis, we've got the measurements with the mean being shown as the dashed line. So that's the mean of all measurements. And then we've got three colors, one for each of the operators. So Hamza is blue, Ikra is red, and Raisa is green. Hamza is blue, here's his three measurements of part A. Then there's Ikra's, then there's Raisa's. So for part A, we can say that Hamza was measuring the highest, then Ikra, then Raisa. But we don't know who's actually correct. Is it that Hamza's correct and the other two are measuring lower? Is it that Raisa's correct and the other two are measuring higher? Remember, from the measurement system, we don't have a, a reference value here. And if we look at Hamza's first measurement, okay, then the second one is slightly lower and the third one is slightly higher. So that's Hamza's repeatability. And as you know, reproducibility is a difference between operators. And here you can see the difference between the operators Hamza's highest, then Ikra, then Raisa. Okay, so now our first task is, from the gauge run chart, estimate which is the stickiest part and the least sticky part. That was task number two. Okay, so I'm assuming that because this is a friction measurement, if you have high friction, then the pan is stickier. And if you have low friction, the pan is less sticky. Okay, so we want to compare the part with the highest measurements to the part with the lowest measurements. Looking at them, which one would I say was the highest? I'd have to say it's between L and F. So either one of those is the stickiest part. Right, let's have a look for the least sticky part now. So we're looking at the, the lowest values. Well, H looks quite low. However, when we look at B, that's got the similar kind of levels to H for Hamza and Igra, but Race's measurements of part B are quite low. So that would probably drag the overall average down. So I'd say part B is the one with the least amount of friction. So the least sticky. So part three now, estimate from the gauge run chart, which is greater, reproducibility or repeatability? So as I said before, repeatability is within measurements. So we can see a bit of variation for Hamza there, a bit for Ikra and a bit for Racer. Is that within variation greater or is variation across the operators greater? I would say looking at the trends, there's more variation between operators than there is within operator because it doesn't look so bad occasionally Hamza has a, a high value of repeatability but it's not as bad as these kind of ones where we can see a downward trend across Hamza, Ikra and Raisa so there's more variation across operators than there is within operators I'd say meaning that there's more reproducibility error. Number four is run the gauge R&R &R routine using the assistant. I always like to run analysis by first going back to the data window and then running the analysis. So I need to go to assistant, measurement system analysis, analyze data, and then I can put my data columns in. So operator, part, measurement. Now I do have a value of historical standard deviation. I had to look back at the question, but it was 0.43. We don't have any kind of specs, so we just need to click OK. So we've run the gauge R and R routine using the assistant. So part five is saying, what is the breakdown of gauge variation? OK, so here's the breakdown of gauge variation. The total gauge error was 65.7%, and that's made up of 26.4% repeatability and 60% reproducibility. So my estimate from the gauge run chart was correct. There's more reproducibility error than there is repeatability error. Question six, do any of the operators need more training? Well, let's have a look at the next page, which is the variation report. And we're going to have a look at the test retest ranges repeatability. I'm just going to zoom in on that. OK, let's look at the first part of the chart. So there by operator, we get the range of measurements for each operator. So measurement range has to do with repeatability. So Ikra is doing quite well in terms of her average range. 
Race is doing slightly worse, and Hamza's probably slightly better than Race, I'd say. But Hamza has one measurement that's way out. Okay, so Hamza and Racer could do with improving in terms of their ranges. And then we can see by part each person's average range measurement. And you can see for part M where Hamza has not done well at all. But it's only for one particular measurement on part M that he's not done well. And that's dragging the whole range up. The next issue with it, the operators could do with more training is if we have a look at the source of variation, we do have a significant operator by part interaction. Then if we look at the reproducibility operator by part interaction chart, we can see that Raisa is having trouble measuring part B. And that's probably the source of the operator part interaction. Apart from that, on this chart, you can see that Raisa kind of measures the lowest it grows in the middle and then Hamza is kind of measuring the highest. And that's also shown in the operator main effects box plots where it grows in the middle, races towards the lower end and Hamza's at the higher end of measurements. Again, I'll repeat, we don't know who's actually measuring correctly. We can just see that there's a difference leading to part of the reproducibility error. So they could all do with training to align themselves better that will reduce repeatability. Raisa could do with training because she's having trouble with part B. And then Hamza and Raisa could do with training to reduce their measurement ranges to bring down repeatability as well. Question seven, are any of the operators having trouble with any particular parts? Well, we just discussed that previously in number six. Raisa seems to be having trouble with part B and could do with training for that. Is a measurement system acceptable? If not, what are your insights to improve it? The measurement system is obviously not suitable because the measurement system variation is 65.7%, which is quite poor. Most of that is reproducibility. To make it better, we need to reduce reproducibility, but we could also do some work on repeatability. As I said before, around the operator training, what we need to do is make Racer better on part B. We need to reduce ranges for Hamza and Racer, and we could do with making the operators have a less of a bias between each other. And that should make this measurement system better. So that completes this example. If you want to learn more about Minitab, you can subscribe to one of my many courses on my new website, thinksixsigma.com. You can also pick up a free 365 page Six Sigma Greenbelt guide from my website, thinksixsigma.com. Let's continue to learn together. See you soon.